What's going on everybody? Jammers here with another Street Fighter 5 video and today we're going to be talking about tick throws, more specifically uh, how effective they are with Rainbow Mika. Now this is something that I'd expect you know everybody you know from low level play to top level play for Rainbow Mika. But we're not going to be talking about the generic tick throws which I will go over those in general but we're going to be doing it with and I, I was very clueless I was probably scratching my head as to what to call this video but we're going to be talking about tick throws using two lights uh, two light attacks with rainbow Mika. that's probably what i'll title it if, I, if someone come up with a better title or maybe even a completely different title that'd be much appreciated in the comment section below but yeah we're going to be using two light attacks and going into a throw uh, with rainbow Mika because it's a, a very effective tactic when it comes to uh closing out the round or even going for the stun and i feel not many people uh, not many people know that they can take advantage of uh, going for a command throw or even a regular throw at certain ranges with rainbow mika i know a few people do like i said high level and top level players that play mika they'll know this already but i think not everyone knows so we're going to try and help them pretty much went uh, pretty much went full circle explain that apologies for repeating myself time and time again but yeah without further ado let's jump straight into it so let me just double check we're all good to go yes we're good to go so first of all uh, we need to explain what a tick throw is because people may have heard it quite a bit but you may not understand the the basic premises of a tick throw so i'm going to leave the description on the screen right now uh, so you guys can understand full well uh, what a tick throw is this is just a basic definition but i'll leave a link to the description uh, where I found this definition below so you can have a proper read up on it yourself. So what is a tick throw? A tick throw involves attacking and aiming for a throw whether it be normal or command throw just as the opponent is made more conscious of blocking and I guess you can class this as uh, tick throws can essentially be considered a frame trap with throws. Now that's a very interesting point because in Street Fighter 5 with the priority system uh, in certain situations or a lot of situations when it comes to frame traps and whatnot throws do actually out prioritize normals in our case it can be a jab maybe in a medium or even another throw so on and so forth but we're going to show you some uh you know, examples right now as what i mean by a tick throw and how they out prioritize uh, normals and then we'll go into other examples so let me just get the computer yes the computer is guarding all perfect that's what i was doing last training mode so i've got cpu mika to do a jab now a tick throw essentially what you what you've probably seen a lot but didn't know the proper term for it in Street Fighter 5 or heck in other fighting games as well. It, I think it, the, the term did originate from a Street Fighter game, I can't actually remember. Don't take my word for gospel. But you essentially go for a light or you continue to do light pressure. I've got the, uh, the CPU doing jab but let me take that off for a second. So you continue to go for light pressure like this but then you go with the intent to do a throw. Whether it be a command throw or a regular throw. They have to be in range. Of the throw to connect now doing it with lights it's all depending on the pushback on block that the light generates so if i do a crouch light kick i'm still in range of a regular throw if i do a stern jab i'm still in range of regular throw if i do that regular throw and if i do that regular throw so that's the, that's basically what a tick throw is just going with lights and just going for a command for afterwards just to try and catch them off guard or if they're more conscious of blocking something which is what this is really helpful with uh, command grab characters because tick throws are kind of essential uh, to their game plan uh, some people I'd say the older generation find it as a very cheap tactic um, but I don't know I, I found a personal love for tick throws and I always like to go for them for some weird reason but with command grab characters I feel it's imperative and essential now going off what I was saying before uh, with Street Fighter 5 and the priority system if you're in a situation where we're going to do Mika's jab which is plus two and block and I go for a command grab the command grab will out prioritize the jab and it'll beat it so that's essentially a, a frame trap with throws hence why I put that in the definition of a tick throw before because that's important information to know so you can actually out prioritize normals uh, especially lights if you get your frame traps on point or yeah if you play frame tight you can actually just beat out a normal I don't think that used to happen in the old games. Um, I, I can't remember if it did. It should be normals out prioritized throws in that situation. But this is why throws are very prevalent in Street Fighter 5 because you can actually frame trap with them due to the priority system. So, yeah, that's going to be the generic example. Hopefully, that uh, made sense of a tick throw. So, yeah, you just do a light and then you go for a grab. Or you can do, uh, you know, multiple lights. But as long as you're in range, uh, you should be able to land or go for that tick throw basically um 
But yeah, hopefully that explanation makes sense. Now what we're going to be doing is, this is the the main part of the video, this is the core of the video or the crucial information part. Um, it's doing throws, mainly command grabs with two light attacks. So this is basically like understanding the ranges uh, of where you can do a command grab. And you may have seen this at high level, you may have seen me do it in certain matches or you may have been doing it yourselves, but we're going to be putting it in an actual video format so people can reference this properly and understand exactly what I mean. So as I said before, a tick throw can be done with one light and then you go for a regular throw. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing it with two light attacks, but since I'm not in range of a regular throw, there's certain, I'll say there's certain strings or certain light attack sequences you can do that will still leave you in range for a command grab. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go for the Sorry, we're going to uh, go for the Notorious Command Grab first, which is uh, EX Rainbow Typhoon. Just so you know what it looks like. I know people should know what it looks like, but there's some people that might go, Oh, what's the EX Rainbow Typhoon? Do what it looks like. So the EX Giant Swing. Now, the, I've said this information before, I believe. I can't remember if I put it in video format. We're going to put it in here just in case. Now, when you do any two light attacks in a sequence, Mika is still in range of a Command Grab. So if I wanted to do two Crouching Light Attacks, I'm still in range of a command throw, an EX Rainbow Typhoon. That's pretty good stuff. If I do two crouching lights, I'm still in range of an EX Rainbow Typhoon. If I do, if I mix it up, maybe go for a stand light punch crouch light kick, I'm still in range of an EX Rainbow Typhoon. So hopefully you guys are getting the general gist of it. Any two light attacks I do in a sequence, um, I'm still in range or Mika is still in range of an EX Rainbow Typhoon. This is very important and crucial for her opponents to know because they might not just go for maybe a raw command grab after a setup. If I get the computer to do a guard after first attack, so if I go for like a wingless airplane and go for a setup, I'm not going to go for a raw command grab like that because that might be too obvious in certain situations. So if you're unsure of what how the opponent will wake up, but you want to land the command throw, this is a situation you might want to do. So you might want to go like one, two, and then bam. So that's what I mean. After I do two lights, you're still in range of EX Rainbow Typhoon. The range of that is amazing. So make sure to note that down. I'll probably make a reference note of it uh, at the end of the video. Any two lights you do, you're still in range of an EX Rainbow Typhoon. Now this is something that, uh, that should be mandatory. Uh, that should be like, you know, standard information uh, people should know. But then I don't think a lot of people know that if you actually do two light attacks, uh, I think it's with uh, crouching jabs, right? Uh, sorry, let me take this off guard all again. If you do cr two crouching light punches, you're still in range of a regular Rainbow Typhoon. The light version and the medium version, I believe. So let's just double check. So one, two, and then you're still in range of the, uh, the light Rainbow Typhoon. And if I do that again, oh, okay, the medium one didn't come out. Ah, there you go. The medium one, you're still in range of the medium version. So that's taking advantage of the ranges that Rainbow Typhoon had. This is, this is a very good command grab and probably one of the better command grabs in Street Fighter V. Now, a place where you'd probably want to do it is somewhere in the corner. Um, or so somewhere in the corner, in the corner, obviously, because the opponent can't walk away from your command, uh, your command grab. Now, one thing that's uh, important to note down when using Rainbow Miko or Grappler is if your opposing character has a, a decent backwards walk speed because a lot of people tend to walk out of things in Street Fighter 5 because walking back in general is very potent. Not many characters can capitalize or uh, fully punish opponents for walking backwards via a low. Mika is one of them, but when you're in the corner and you do like two lights with a tick grab, you're still in range of a light rainbow typhoon, a medium one, or like I said before, you're definitely in range for an EX rainbow typhoon there. So again, it's just knowing those ranges. I don't think you can do the heavy one because the heavy one has the poorest range. Uh, yeah, the heavy one has the poorest range. However, and this is me playing frame tight. As you can see there, I'm doing crouch jab into stand jab, but because crouching light punch is plus one, uh, that will change stand light punch from a, a four frame button to a three frame button. So that could trade with other three frame button characters. So you won't get that situation. Whereas if I'm doing this, it's basically changing crouch jab from a three frame button to a two frame button. So that's why you're doing it with two light punches and still in range. And that's why the heavy version will not be in range of that, if that makes sense. This is going to sound like a bunch of gibberish coming out of my mouth, but hopefully you guys are seeing the pattern of what I'm trying to explain to you uh, using tick throws uh, via two light attacks instead of one. Now, 
Another thing you can do as well, uh, this is more effective in the corner, but I'll show it mid-screen first, uh, is this is why I was saying, going back to my point, Oz, you need to understand the how far the opponent gets pushed back on block via certain attacks. And because light, uh, light attacks have low blocks done and you recover from them very quickly, you can catch the opponent off guard. Oh, of course, uh, just a piece of side information here so you uh, should know. Uh, all of Mika's light attacks are plus. Uh, it's just stand light punches plus two. The rest of them are plus one, which is why it's important to know uh, the block stun, the range on the pushback, etc, uh, etc. Et now, going back to what I was saying, if you do, uh, again, two light attacks, if you do stand light kick and crouch, uh, stand light kick, crouch light kick, you're actually still in range of an EX Brimstone. Now, I've shown this before, but the reason this is important is because with Giant, uh, with giant Swing, Rainbow Typhoon, you send the opponent away, and sometimes uh, in the heat of play, and just to build momentum, you don't want to throw the opponent away from you and go back to neutral unless it's going to stun or kill the opponent. You want to do brimstone as much as you can to take him close to the corner to make sure you can accentuate what Mika's all about. Just mixing up her opponent like so many times in the corner. That's why with this little uh, tick throw string, I should say, or block string, uh, that the EX brimstone is still good. Now, you're not actually in range of any other grab because you're too far. Uh, because the EX version has the maximum range. But as I was saying before, this is why it's better to do it in the corner. Most of these sequences I'm showing you, they are super effective in the corner because the opponent can't walk anywhere. They can jump, they can neutral jump or jump forward. But let's say, for instance, with this string here, the reason this is good with two light attacks is because, let's say, for instance, we'll get the opponent to guard first only. Let's say they block that, but then they're anticipating the tick throw from you, whether it be a regular throw or not. Um, you can click them with the low, and if you've got one bar for the, the EX Brimstone, you can go, oh, wait, it's confirmed. Let me confirm into EX Shooting Peach. So that's where the real mix-up lies in that little string there. Having one bar for these tick throw sequences is really good, but uh, again, they're most effective in the corner. And again, another piece of information. I'm just going to be chucking random pieces of information about you, but they're all uh, important and they all correlate with the, the point of this video, which hopefully you guys are understanding. Um, when you're tick throwing, uh, let's put it like this. This is, this is a very easy way of doing it. Right. If you want to tick throw the regular grab, only one light attack will work. Um, yeah, because if you do two light attacks, like I said, the opponent's out of range and you're not in range of a regular throw. So if you want to tick throw with a regular grab, do one light attack, then regular throw. And of course you can mix it up with the command throw as well, really mix it up with a button. So there's three options of the opponent has to guess uh, which one of the three is coming out. But if you uh, tick throw with a command grab via the two lights, you're still in range of certain command grabs there. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so that that's generally the point of this whole video so uh, uh, it's just one of those things where i know some mika players know but not all of them know about this and don't understand the ranges so it's better to put it in video format showcase some examples and have a little bit of uh, explanation running commentary over it as well all right so that's gonna wrap up the video here hopefully this has been insightful and it's it's kind of made sense because i know i went on the tangent quite a bit and all the snippets of information might have come up sporadic times and probably don't correlate with anything i said but we're just going to summarize what we spoke about in the video here so first up what we did was we spoke about any two light attacks you do uh, you always be in range for an ex rainbow typhoon on block this is perfect for closing out the round or going for the stun so that's important information to know your after any two light attacks you're in range of an ex rainbow typhoon uh, if you do, this is probably the most effective one, if you do two crouching light punch, uh, like quick, uh, you chain them basically, two crouching light punches, you're still in range of a uh, light rainbow typhoon or a medium rainbow typhoon. This is really effective in the corner, you've got to be wary of the opponents trying to jump away or even trying to walk back. Uh, and like I said, in the corner they can't walk back, so the, one of the, the limited options is jump away or even do a reversal if they have one there. And this is more specific as well uh, if you do stand light kick into crouch light kick you are still in range of an ex rainbow or sorry ex brimstone but as i said before if the opponent is anticipating a tick throw or a command grab uh, you actually can clip them and convert into a combo into ex shooting peach and of course one way to simplify this to make it the basics of the basics if you want to tick throw 
uh, into a regular throw, you do one light attack, then go for the regular throw or mix up with command throw a button. But if you're going for a command grab and you really want to throw off your opponent, do two light attacks like those certain sequences are telling you to keep them uh, keep them guessing like you're going to end with a string or something or you're just going to end via a button and then go for the command grab and catch them off guard there. So hopefully this has made sense. Um, yeah, just a generic thing about tick throws, I guess. And again, I really didn't know what to call or name this video, so it's probably going to have some weird ass title. But like I said, I'm all open for ideas, suggestion of, of what the title should be called for this video. And I'll change the title and the thumbnail uh, respectively for that. Uh, I'll leave all the necessary information in the description below. But hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video and you've learned something new. This has been your boy HT Jammers and I will see you guys on the next Street Fighter 5 video. So until then, take care and enjoy the rest of your day.